This NFL Picks Week 13 edition of the Sports Gaming Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted same game parlays to live in game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today, bet $100 and get a $100 free bet at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T. everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean second, the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer dog. Oh, I just wish people could have seen you before that welcome where you, I mean, there was full blown Russ. Uh, we'll, we'll call them lunges. You're sitting down, but you're also doing a lunge. You're getting ready to throw it in, play a little chicken with the, uh, the guys, but behind the booth. I almost, uh, I almost came out of my chair. Uh, I was, I was wound up so far back, Ryan, because we're it's, here, we're back, we're live in Vegas at the Blue Wire Studio in the beautiful win in Las Vegas, and it's just, we're here, NFL Week 13. Uh, it's just great to be back in studio. I think this is a great reset of mojo. Get back on the, get back on the heater. I love it. And uh, yeah, man, just excited I to talk NFL picks. Did not even consider the change of scenery might be needed with the picks. Oh, one hundred percent. This was not an accident, Ryan. I also went back and saw what I wore in NFL Week One, what I'm wearing now. <laughs> I didn't wear the I wore the Jalen Hurts jersey Week One, but I'm bringing back the chain <laughs> for the entire episode. Rare breed, untamed. And uh, uh, of course I've had numerous people disparage it and call it a necklace. It is not a necklace. <laughs> it is a chain. What's and, the difference? Uh, well, enlighten me. a chain is something badass that, you know, dudes like myself wear. No, my wife wears a necklace. I wear a badass chain. Now right. gra granted this was purchased off Etsy from my wife as a Christmas gift, but, and I wonder if it, and Jalen hurts debuted his new chain. I, I have to see what store he got it on Etsy. Cause that thing looks pretty sick. I mean, we're just headed down a dangerous path where the NFL is going to be about a costume party in a couple of the Raiders fans are way ahead of the curve, Sean. way ahead of the curve. Chat is lit. Shout out to Benedict Dantol. Oh. Uh, he's pointing out LT in the house. Ryan rocking his LT hoodie. Uh, we got the dong sound effect going. Uh, you guys have <laughs> new studio. Nice. Oh yeah. Uh, all right. I'll take credit for that. Yeah. Uh, what's up dogs. Everyone is ready to go. And of course we're coming to you live from the win Las Vegas studio. And of course, if you're betting at home, you got to bet with the best AKA win bet. Just go to sports podcast.com slash win bet, bet a hundred dollars, get a hundred dollar free bet, risk free bet, fire up a parlay wheel, the, the parlay wheel. Again, the, the, the genius is over a win bet. This is my favorite gimmick. You place the parlay. They're like, do you want to spin the wheel? Of course you want to spin the wheel. You can get parlay boosts, uh, entries to win prizes. It is just awesome. And of course, live in game wagering, the win, build your own bet, uh, Ryan, which we've been again, not to my own horn 90 to one, uh, a couple weeks ago with the Austin Hooper, we gave out our Thursday night, uh, earlier uh, the, the uh, Thursday night props episode. We gave out some sweet ones. Kramer. Kramer one of us gave out. One of us gave out two hundred and fifty to one. <laughs> Winbet may cancel our sponsorship if that hits right. So I hope you're happy. Uh, as always, offer subjects to change terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be twenty one or older and present in the state where play through Winbet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call one 800 522 forty seven hundred. All Woo! right, let's get to the picks. That's it. Nothing you don't want to ref anything to reflect on last week. No. no. nothing to reflect at all. Okay. Sure. What do you want to reflect no, on? I don't have, I have nothing to reflect on. Well then, why bring the Giants it up? lost to the Cowboys again? It was horrible. <laughs> they did cover. It was split my locks again. It was my lock that hit. So shout out to you and the Giants for. That. I mean, that was a Thanksgiving miracle if I ever saw one. That that covering the ten points as the time expired, right? And, and for the backdoor police who want to tell you the the Giants backdoor that one, yes. Football Outsiders thought it should have been a one and a half point victory. So 
<laughs> Suck it, nerds. Wait, aren't the football outsiders nerds? Yeah, that's the that's oh, why so you're, I'm, you're I'm telling... using the nerds against the okay. nerds. It's the language they speak <laughs> between the cells, as they call it, Sean. That's going to be my uh, my 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 future podcast. All right, uh, Thursday night. Some people will tell you this is short rest. We'll let you know and remind you these teams played a full oh, week yeah. ago on Thanksgiving. Buffalo had the early game. They're laying three and a half here on the road in New England. As I pointed out on the prop show, Sean, first time Josh Allen will be facing the New England Patriots, not in week 16 on the road. Uh, interesting nugget, scheduling nugget there. Minus 180 for Josh Allen on the road, plus 150 for Mac Jones. 43 and a half is the total. Uh, I'm well, look this opened at like six, five and a half, whatever. It got bet down hard. People are clearly looking at this like, Hey, this is Belichick, Josh Allen, the bills. They're not right. But when you look back over the last couple of years, Josh Allen has bent bill Belichick over <laughs> at home. Yeah. And, he and has, he, he has given Robert Kraft what he wants. I mean, Bill Belichick and the the Patriots, they struggle against rushing quarterbacks. I mean, Justin Fields went in there as a massive dog on Monday night and got a victory. Whatever that Bill Belichick and that his mullet loving son, uh, Steve Belichick, they just cannot figure out how to uh, play contain on rushing quarterbacks like Josh Allen. We mentioned on the prop show, I think Josh Allen is going to have a huge uh, rushing game or at least very much at least hit his over. Uh, there's a couple of interesting nuggets here. This is actually Josh Allen because of the blizzard, because of the short week and everything. This is his first time with a full week of regular practice. I think that is huge for this bills team. And again, like they, he's able to hit the deep ball. He's not able to hit the short underneath stuff. I think the short underneath stuff is going to be replaced uh, with him running uh, and the bills are getting healthy on the defensive side. AJ Epinesa, uh, he should be able to get a nice pass rush. I am kind of nervous. This is the Bills third road game. Although two of those were in the same city. They're neither but of they trips, traveled in between. Neither of these uh trips are too far. Sean Hockley is refing the game. That's a good sign for the Patriots. Home teams are nine and two straight up, five, five, and one ATS at home. And uh teams have won nine in a row straight up for the Pats. I don't think they ha- I don't think they get a tenth. I like the Bills in this setup. I, I think Mac Jones look good because it was in a dome against his Vikings defense, which we'll get to later is, you know, bottom of the league, you know, 31st in uh defensive EPA. So I, I I'm all over the bills here. Uh, yeah. A couple other bits of cleanup. The other data point on three straight road games from this year, of course, your Eagles are about to hop into that world starting this week, but the Packers in their third of a third game, uh, of a three game road stretch. They lost and de- failed to cover uh, Sean. You're going against bill Belichick as a home underdog, 13 and six ATS. Yeah, don't like that, but I'm kind of with you. The you know, gambling laws tell us we lay the three and a half. We don't take How it. Has that been going this season? It's not important. <laughs> it's just a bylaw. It's kind of like religion. You don't question it. It doesn't it's, make it's sense. Fake. You just stick to it. Uh, and Josh Allen, just good in new England. Uh, has never not covered in new England has, has never lost on Thursday night, three and one ATS in those games. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm in, I, I think, I think we're getting a little bit of a discount. I think to your point, we're going to see Josh Allen run a lot, hopefully score two touchdowns, get, get us rich. But you know what though? Part of me does worry. I do worry about this bills team, Sean. I worry that this, uh, this bills team is really missing Brian Dable and I'm going to be really pissed. If I was right all along. Well, and I think this is since the buy, they've been shit, Sean. They've been <laughs> shit. Uh, I think, I think the red zone interceptions could be huge. I mean, again, it, Josh Allen, we you've said it right a number of times, Josh Allen doing Josh Allen things, forcing the ball. We saw that in Thanksgiving. That was a big uh, you reason know what? they Actually, didn't cover switch my pick. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. you always fade the bills, right? No, what I doing? We, 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 we pie we trademark Josh Allen doing Josh Allen things. And I keep taking the bills and looking like an asshole all because I have the guilt of the Don of bills, mafia, <laughs> Adam Pelletier in my head, shaming me for fading the bills so often I, I early think, in the I season. Think, I think what separates it is Belichick and these Patriots against rushing quarterbacks. So I'm, I'm sticking with Buffalo. Per, perhaps you're right. 
Uh, I've been horrible on Thursday, too, so who knows what's going to happen here. All right, next up, let's head over to Sunday, 10 a.m. on the West Coast. The Jets head to the spaceship in Minnesota. Vikings minus three, minus 160 on the money line. Jets plus 135. 44 and a half is the total. <sighs> All right, we, we're going to have to address it. Vikings, uh, worst DVOA. For a nine and two team ever, they're twenty. Every, every, I think every week they every keep week. going on. It's even if they lose, it'll still be worst team DVOA for a nine and three team. Twenty second overall in DVOA uh, behind the Jags, uh, behind you know teams, r- great teams like that. All right, so listen, but listen to this: that horrible nine and two team, they can clinch the division this week. Really? If they win and, and Detroit Packers lose, no. Detroit and the lions lose, <laughs> they clinch the division and it would be the earliest a division winner has been clinched in the super bowl era. Sean, really? Let that fucking what about, sink in. What about right all now. those Patriots years? Let they, that sink they in. They were right dominating now. the year they were undefeated. Just let that sink in. That's that's insane. All right. I mean, I, it's I, sunk. I, the handicap, the handicap here is simple for me. Okay. Uh, will we get a second Mike White bump? Because he looked good. I think so. I think so. Because here's the thing with Mike White, he's efficient, right? Um, and I think I think he's playing like two of the best. He's playing literally the back-to-back two worst passing defense in the league yeah. with the Chicago Bears and the Minnesota Vikings. Like they're 31 and 32, whatever sort of metric you want to look at, but they're really dead last. And on the other side. Sauce Gardner versus Justin Jefferson. I like that matchup. I also think they're going to be able to slow down Dalvin Cook, who has really been hit or miss. To me, I, I think this is an interesting DFS play as well. Bring back the Jets double stack because you're in that dome. It's going to be high scoring, and you bring it back with TJ Hawkinson. What is the double stack? No, oh, Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore. Okay. They both have they both have ten career touchdowns, and Zach Wilson has only thrown three of them. There there's some insane stats here. I mean, the Vikings made Mac Jones look like uh, fucking Joe Montana on 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 uh, Thanksgiving night. I don't think he's that good. And man, that Vikings team had some, or sorry, that Jets team had some juice. I get why you would like the Vikings. They're coming off long rest. They're not getting the number they should for the win loss. But if like matchup wise, man, I I I think the Jets are going to be in a pretty good spot here. I mean, Jets to, have a top five pass rush rate, and to me, that's how you beat the uh, that's how you beat the Minnesota Vikings. You rush the passer. Now, I thought <laughs> I thought the Patriots would be able to get to Kirk Cousins. They weren't. Judon wasn't able to get there. So if if the Vikings' offensive line and um, do we know if uh, Darisaw is playing again? I, his concussion seemed bad. I I think there's so, a chance. It sounds like I've seen nothing suggesting he's trending towards playing. So. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. I, I, I think to me, this is, I think the data like numbers would probably tell you to take the jets here. Uh, may, maybe this gets to three and a half with public money. I doubt it. Uh, looking at the money splits, um, which if you're curious, uh, Buffalo is sitting on a 60, 40 split in that game, Minnesota, same split here, 58, uh, 42 on the bets. So which is a little surprising to me because it seems like the the Jets have been a team that have uh, sl- slotted into being a little reliable. I, I don't know. I to me this is I I'm with you. I'm I'm Mike White comes back with with game two. I don't know if there'll be a game three. No. I and and, but, and normally we talk about the backup quarterback coming in. You get that one week bump and and then it all falls apart. A la Colt McCoy stuff like that. I think you. But. Can, not many of those situations that what that was like were wide receivers putting Instagram pictures of them throwing passes because <laughs> no, the quarterback I, was I so think, fucking bad. And I think this is historic, right? They're playing two of the worst passing defenses back to back. You're in a dome environment, perfect for Mike White. Mike White's confidence is is through the roof, and really he should have been the starter from day one. So I think I think it doesn't the normal backup QB stuff doesn't apply to Mike White. And like strangely, the fact that they throw they just destroy, destroyed the Bears. Like they had they they didn't go maximum effort last week. Uh, yeah, and it was in the rain. Like if that was good weather, they probably could have put up like thirty eight, forty five on. Yeah, I mean Minnesota with extra rest, but that's fine. We'll take the Jets as a dog. 
I'm taking dogs this week, Sean. Dad, All right, look uh, spe- out. Speaking of dogs, uh, the ultimate dog, Russell Wilson. Oh, no. And the Broncos. They're heading to Baltimore. Ravens minus eight and a half, minus 400 on the money line. Broncos plus 320. 39 is the total. Sierra invited the entire Broncos team to <laughs> Russell Wilson's birthday and only half the team attended. <laughs> I assume that was a bunch of walk-ons, well, you it, know, practice squad guys, guys yeah, trying to get a little, bringing uh, the, bringing the uh, teacher an apple. The, Adam Pelletier has this theory the t- that uh, Russell Wilson, of course, in Kevin Costner's uh, draft day movie that the quarterback where no one showed up for his birthday party. That was about Russell Wilson. And uh, we've I mean, highlighted this, and, right? And certainly this story coming out. I was uh, watching one of those like argument shows on Fox while we were sitting in the sports book here at the win. And I, uh, they go, uh, has has Russell Wilson played himself out of the Hall of Fame? <laughs> and they had a serious debate on that. And then it was followed up with a big quote: "He's lost some people in the locker room." lost that implies you had some people in the locker room who was on the rush ship in the past like month and a half melvin gore is college team the, the guy Gorman? the guy he got rid of <laughs> look i, I think the know, one guy was like hey i i should be getting the ball more they immediately sent him back i mean again for those who don't know he he was kicked he was basically told to leave nc state because mike glennon was coming to town that's why he went to wisconsin a lot of validity to the theory uh, if we had the X Files music, it would be playing right now. Brian, laying get, eight and a half though. Lamar Jackson not practicing again. Uh, Lamar Jackson dealing with the quad injury. I, I mean, do I sound like a dick if I say I hate Lamar Jackson? He has sabotaged our uh, our high stakes fantasy league where he he keeps playing and even yeah. even against the Jags. I rewatched it. I I thought a lot of it was his fault, but man. Mark Andrews had a drop in the end zone. They had so many red zone opportunities. Like some of it is certainly is his fault, but I mean, Deshaun Jackson's their best receiver right now for the Ravens. He, he caught a deep ball and then immediately goes to the sideline. Like he's done. He reminds me of my dad when he was like quarterback in all time football, he would have like one deep throw and then his shoulder would be out and he would have nothing left. That's where Deshaun Jackson is right now, but the Ravens are moving the ball. Well, they're getting so many opportunities. I mean, the Ra- the Ravens have a greater than 50% post game win expectancy in every game this year. <laughs> That's insane. They only trail the Eagles in cumulative win share. This is a team I, I think I think it is fair to say Lamar has let us down because he's made some bad plays. Yeah. His overthrows in the red zone are bad. But but it's also the defense. It, it's also like you said, drops. It, it's also the lack of uh, a receiver that can separate. And you know we don't we, I, we I don't make don't, these excuses about for Daniel Jones, but for Lamar, we'll make them. I uh, just don't think the Broncos. You like, can't lay it. If now. I was setting their team total, it's at like ten and a half, and I would take the under. I don't think they're getting. I mean, they've gotten to twenty <sighs> points twice this season, twice, and this is a back to back. So they went to Carolina. Uh, they lost to the Panthers pretty bad. Like there was never a point where they go, Oh, maybe they're going to backdoor cover this. Maybe the Broncos are going to have a chance against Sam Darnold. No. And you can feel that the Broncos, what they had going for them was their defense was elite. It was carrying their team, carrying their team to, to mediocrity and losing, but they were still really good. At some point, the defense cracks. Well, it, they just give up because if it, what's the point of stopping people if you're not going to put up any Sir, points? Sertan got whooped by DJ Moore last week, for yeah. like for example. So I and, think and, and the Broncos aren't great against the tight ends. I think this is a bounce back spot for Mark Andrews, who owes us a touchdown uh, for that trap. And this is a back to back East Coast road trip for a Broncos team that has horrific mojo. You got the defensive lineman yelling at Russ. I, I wrote down the public teams this week. You want to hear them? My projection, <laughs> the very public teams. I'm sure it's the Ravens, but Ravens, I'm not taking the Broncos. The, I'm not doing it. I took them. I took them against the Raiders at home, and that was the last time. All right, you know what, Sean? Go down, <laughs> scroll down to both of our teasers, and put Baltimore minus two, okay. two and a half right now. That that's the bet. Um, look, they've averaged. I I also brought. I think I mentioned this on the prop show earlier today, Sean. But the the Broncos have averaged. 15.3 points per game. Yeah. This is the worst offensive output since 2000, the Cleveland Browns. I mean, 
it's going to be hard for them to cover spreads if the defense isn't isn't playing hard. And I mean, at what point will we see this guy fired? Will Hackett get fired? Uh, I, I, how can you bring him back? Like you have to show some signs of promise. I don't know how you bring him back. Yeah. All right. I hate being chalky here. It it doesn't feel right. Denver's going to somehow find Not a way. Not betting on Denver feels completely right to me. It's Russ has to get right at some point, right? <laughs> See, this is my, this is my, in the, in my calendar, I already have in the summer. It's going to remind me, it's going to say, don't fall in love with Russ this year. Don't fall. Don't, don't, don't assume he's going to bounce back. Don't assume he's going to know the offense this year. He sucks. He's washed. He's a weirdo. And he stopped drinking his concussion water because it's not good at altitude. Pittsburgh heads to Atlanta Steelers road favorites here. Sean minus one minus one twenty on the money line. Atlanta plus 142 is the total. I love the idea of this being, we were talking about this before the show, but I love this as an opportunity to buy Kenny Pickett as rookie of the year. They still have an opportunity to make a run. It is still Mike Tomlin. So nine and eight, mm, is that possible? Sure it is. It's Mike Tomlin. And if he starts to go, go off a little bit against an easier portion of his schedule now, starting here with the Falcons, I know AJ Terrell is back and healthy, but they have been leaky on the back end. Pickens, Deontay Johnson, uh, Fryermuth. This should be an interesting attack. Their running backs are a little bit down. They don't love Benny Snell, even though he looked pretty good last week. I wonder if this is an interesting passing attack here. Yeah, and- I, I, I think I think Kenny Pickett has a nice game. I don't think he's going to face a ton of pressure. I mean, Atlanta has no sort of pass rush. The fact that Pittsburgh is a road favorite is, is to me, is the Terrifying. only only thing that's scaring me off. But I love T.J. Watt going against this Atlanta Falcons offensive line. And, and when TJ Watt is back, um, you know, their, their rush defense is incredibly stout. Like their weakness really is kind of you know, what Joe Burrow did to them, you know, being able to throw the ball downfield and take advantage yeah. of their weak secondary. And, and clearly Marcus Mariota, isn't the guy to do that. Uh, Steelers are fourth in adjusted uh, run defensive EPA. And that's the only thing the Falcons do right on the offensive side of the ball. I, I think the Falcons have gotten really one dimensional. They started out six and zero against the spread. I still, they haven't covered since one time. No, I think that was, if oh, you was got a like a, it was a push. Most right. places had it as a push. You're right. Maybe You're you right. got like the three, the two and a half, <laughs> but I'm going to, for my point, I'm going to say they haven't covered since they started out six and zero ATS. My, I just my don't see any, Falcons. I don't see any matchups. That the Steelers are uh, losing and Kenny Pickett has swag, man. We, we got a, we might also have to make that note about not falling in love with Mike Tomlin and the Steelers again. <laughs> no, I think next year is the year to fall in love. I, I love Cause, both cause, of these cause Pickett is getting good experience. Yeah. You know, they're going to have a decent draft. You know, Pickett will probably make a nice year one right. to year two leap. Let's go stand behind it. Uh, as much as I love my Falcons, uh, as good as they've been at home, <laughs> uh, I'm taking the Steelers here. And by the way, buy Kenny Pickett now 33 to one. Yes. Rookie of the year. Official play. Lock it in. Uh, I mean, come on. He's a quarterback. If they go, if they get a little hot, it doesn't take well, much. No, to... Cause I mean the, the other offensive rookie of the year is your, uh, you know, it's, it's, your Kenneth Walker, it's Walker your right Olave's your Garrett Wilson's like they kind of cancel each other out. And I don't think Kenneth Walker's year has been so strong that it completely overpasses a guy. Like no. if pick it, if they start winning the game, even if they're just in that, in the hunt graphic, I mean, what uh, in did, December, he might win it. Yeah, what did Justin Jefferson have to do to get it? Like, historic season, right? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't always happen. So, I mean, uh, who won? Didn't Herbert win it his rookie year? Yes. And they didn't make the playoffs. So, and he started probably well, he a similar so, amount of games. Yeah, he was so good. And he was so much better than Tua. Remember that? <laughs> Remember those days when Tua sucked? Now Tua is like the best quarterback in the league, Sean. It's so, it's so weird. No. You, you willed it into existence. Island strong. Shout out Tua. Tennessee. The Titans, Mike Vrabel coming to town with his meat sword. Philly, minus five and a half, minus 240 on the money line. Tennessee, plus 200. 44 and a half is the total. Sean, the second team on my public teams list. Not your Philadelphia Whoa. Eagles. The Tennessee Titans. Staggering north of 80% of the bets. Uh, this feels a little disrespectful. I know the matchup on paper, and I'll let you go into the details. I know the matchup on paper. Hey, the Titans can stop the run, and they can run the ball. That's how you beat the Eagles, in theory. Yeah, but I, I think the Eagles are going to be able to pass on the Tennessee Titans. 
I think this is an AJ Brown revenge game. He's had a couple like uh, kind of just crappy games. He was sick uh, dealing with some other stuff. And, and I think this is a nice game for him. I think him, Quez Watkins, Devonta Smith actually have a, a nice game against this Titan secondary. Cause I, I don't think they're going to be able to get the pass rush. They normally get Eagles offensive line is playing really well. Now there's uh, Jordan Davis is back from IR. He's able to practice this week. Will he play on Sunday? Is he back up to playing weight? Yeah, he's uh, he's up to 425. <laughs> I think he, I, if I had to guess, I think he'll play, but it'll probably only be like 10 snaps. But I think Linval Joseph and Dominic and Sue. Yeah, I think they're super gonna, team assemble. Well, I think what they can do is they can load up the box. Now, granted, yeah, you don't have CJ GJ. Uh, he's out. You don't have their nickel safety, Avante Maddox. I'd love to hear a bunch of guys with Philly accents saying CJ <laughs> GJ. Oh, I mean the uh, the amount you could just Ryan the the That's amount of excitement when the white safety Reed Blankenship caught a uh, interception was just I mean it was like Vince <laughs> Papali esque just running out of the tunnel. You can tell everyone's like. Uh, a white safety, a white defensive back. After, Yo, this guy's the best. After the game, Yo, he, I want to get a water with him. He went and played some pickup ball with his boys in the mud behind the bar. <laughs> read, read Blankenship. Just because he had like <laughs> two good tackles and one interception of Aaron Rodgers, uh, he's he's like close to just being like a f- local folk hero. Legend. Legend. He had a, he took a terrific angle on Christian <laughs> Watson. But everyone's like, hey, he's a white safety. What are you going to do? <laughs> he's not fast. But uh, I, I think if they get Jordan Davis back, that's going to help. I think if I'm an Eagles fan, which I am, mm. or an Eagles better, which I am, I think what you're talking yourself into is how did the Titans do against a quarterback that can run? Let's hear it. And throw the ball and was at home. Well, let's see. Uh, the Buffalo Bills fit that model. Josh Allen is able to run. I mean, Jalen Hurts right now throwing the ball and running the ball better than Josh Allen. I said it. I, and so I think they match up pretty well against that Titans defense. That's a great comp. The, Any the, other comps from the season? No, I, I think the case for the Titans is simply Vrabel is a dog, uh, Vrabel off a loss. And then Eagles the week before they play the giants, uh, they, they aren't great ATS. So it's a non-conference game. They had a big win against the Packers. Maybe this is in that letdown window. I don't see it. I think the AJ Brown revenge thing. He's a pretty vocal guy. I think that's going to carry it for him. Eagles can clinch a playoff berth this weekend. Sean, did you know that? Did you know that? Uh, I did not. I saw that they had. Yeah. With the win and a Seahawks commanders and Niners loss. Okay. They would clinch a playoff berth. This would be the second earliest a team has clinched a playoff birth in the Super Bowl era since the 1990 New York football giants really who later went on to win the Super Bowl with Mr. Jeff Hostedler real man's man another great comp for that mobile quarterback granted it was on the road Mr. Daniel Jones week one 21 20 victory over those Titans Mr. Jones and I'm on Philly as well I wow love it well I think I think the narrative of I mean, I, I, th- I kind of think Philly's a little undervalued right now. And I don't think they're going to be looking ahead to a Giants game in a season like this. Um, the Eagles have, like, the Eagles see a path to shortening their season, a.k.a. getting some rest, getting healthy. Uh, they win a couple games here, a couple key games at the end of the year, and they can pretty much lock some stuff up. So I think uh, super focus, it's Philly at home. It's Tennessee. Yes, Tennessee gets some, gets some juice out of the fruit, but... Last week, what did we see? Cincinnati got it done. Cincinnati got it done on the number, too. Uh, I think this game, if Tennessee doesn't capture the lead early, I think this is going to be a tough one. We're going to see Tannehill throw some pick. I, th- I think the bigger story here will be Tannehill against those DBs when he's forced to throw a uh, pick six loading. Stay tuned for the prop show. I love Ooh. the Eagles to score a defensive touchdown this week. Let's go. Jacksonville heads to Detroit where the Lions are catching a point. What? Plus 100, <laughs> minus 120 for the Jags on the road. 51 and a half is the total. And uh, holy shit, Sean, have you listened to the the nerd love for Trevor Lawrence this week? Dude, I, I, again, I'm not trying to come what off as doing? a hater. No. I've watched a shit ton of Trevor Lawrence. He did have one good drive against <laughs> the the Ravens and a couple decently placed balls. But man, that, that strip sack where he had no vision, that like just complete a line drive into the Ravens safety's hands that he dropped. Uh, he, this was not an amazing game. It was one good drive. 
Everyone's saying, like, this is the coming out party for Trevor Lawrence. If this is what you like out of a, if this is, hey, this is what a number one overall pick is, man, you are, I, I, I think you're missing the boat. I have a hot take, AKA a comp for uh, who Trevor Lawrence is. I think his ceiling is winning a tough road game in the playoffs and looking good in system when the, you got a smart offensive mind. I think Jared Goff is the comp <laughs> for Trevor Lawrence. Wow, that's a great, I, great call. Right? I, I think these guys are a little bit mirror images. We're seeing what Doug Peterson can do with quarterbacks. We know that we always knew Doug Peterson was going to get the most out of Trevor. So the positive stuff, I'm more willing to give credit to the coach. And some of the negative stuff, I, I do think he still has that naivete that just terrifying. He's going to lose games before he wins games. And honestly, on the road, I... I know the numbers love Jacksonville. I know they're like the analytical darling still. Well, I don't know if they are. Cause I uh, shout out to our boy, Walter football pointed out Detroit's defense, 19th in defensive EPA Jags 31st. And you saw that with the Ravens. Like they, the Ravens were moving the ball up and down the field. They just shot themselves in the foot with some horrible stuff in the red zone. If this lions team can get it done in the red zone, I think, I think also, I think this is an interesting DFS game. It's non-conference. Oh. It's two pretty bad defenses in a dome. Uh, Jags are one and four against the spread on the road. Uh, and yeah, I, I think this is a good opportunity for the lions. Actually. I, I just don't, the Lions shouldn't be non-conference road favorites against anyone and the Jag and the lions have long rest against the Jags team that are, I mean, you saw the embrace uh, with Doug P like if they had Gatorade <laughs> down in Florida, yeah. they'd be dumping it all over them. They felt like they won the super bowl. It's a great time to fade the Jets. Which fun fact per the per the uh, football outsiders, this was only that was only the this past weekend where we had two two point conversions for the win. Yeah, that was apparently only the eleventh uh, and twelfth time it had happened in NFL history. Which, in my mind, it's happened a lot more than that. So I, I was a little bit surprised by that. Uh, I think the other the other angles to look at here, quite quite frankly, is Jacksonville's got Tennessee on deck, and I know Jacksonville's kind of got to win all their games, but. Big divisional game like that on deck as well. There's no world I'm taking Jacksonville as a favorite no. in, in any situation. I, I like your angle. This, this is definitely a, D, a game to circle for for DFS purposes. Uh, and, and just a little nugget, uh, it seems as though Zay Jones maybe has passed Christian Kirk as the number one option down there. So, Which is horrible, again, news uh, yeah. for our well, fantasy We've cursed. Team. We, we have absolutely <laughs> – I think it's on us, Sean. I'm starting yeah. to think we're the curse. Uh, not, not the players. We're like the, uh, you know, the drummer for the grateful dead. As soon as you become it, you're immediately, uh, you're immediately dead on arrival. Uh, what was that movie where everyone just dies? All right. 10 AM, uh, on the West coast, Washington, the commanders, AKA the football team, AKA the Redskins. they take on the giants and Sean, you know, a lot of things, if there was a flow chart for the NFC East, mm. it would involve a situation where the giants beat the Redskins. Every time Danny dimes own like matchup wise, Washington laying two and a half on the road, minus minus one thirty five on the money line plus one fifteen for the giants. 40 and a half is the total. I don't, it doesn't sound like chase young's a lock to be back this week. Uh, the, the one thing Dan Jones does well is throw the ball deep when he's given opportunities well, to and the one thing he does well is beat the Washington football <laughs> team, Redskin commanders unit. Yeah. Uh, like is it, what is his record against them? It's like four and one straight up, right? It's like one of the teams he actually dominates. Well, it's because the, the Washington football team has been dominated by the giants of late. And you know, you sprinkle in that Washington's on this amazing six and one heater ATS and straight up with Mr. Heineke at the helm. you you, you sprinkle in the fact that we've been saying for weeks, like Heineke is a gamer. Heineke is going to, he's going to rally. But at some point, he's going to have that dip game. I mean, Ryan Fitzpatrick, like those four interception games happen still. We can't ignore that. So uh, I think there's there's no way in my mind that Heineke keeps up this crazy good play, even against the, the ragtag bunch that is the New, New York football Giants defensive backfield. I will say... Uh, key elements of the run game coming back. Where, where, where are we at with the injuries? Because well, I listen, do think the Giants Evan offensive Neal, line has to get help. Since Evan Neal went out, with injury since Daniel Bellinger, their number one tight end, both passing and run blocking went out. They haven't been the same team running the ball. Both those guys look like they're going to play this weekend. I, I think this, this has, this game has an opportunity, has the kind of opportunity to see them get back on track, 
get back to doing some of the things they were able to do early in the season with, uh, like, quite frankly, they don't have anyone else that can block and, and run routes at the tight end position, so Evan for example. Neal is a go. Evan Neal is a go. Uh, like, and he was playing well. He Daniel had Bellinger? He's, that's why I said he's in. Yeah. I think the, so. The run game could be something that Washington has to deal with, and when that happens, like we haven't seen a Daniel Jones, aka Dan Jones, runs for a shitload of yards. Maybe they're saving it next week for uh, Philly. What, what's happened to Saquon? I'm telling you, Evan Neal and Daniel just, Bellinger going. Out. Okay, he's a little banged up, but when you have a guy who can, when you have a a plus blocker on the line at tight end next to a plus blocker in the run game and Evan Neal. Like Evan Neal started slow, but his the, the four games before he got hurt, he only allowed one sack. He was playing pl- very positively in the run game. So, you know, not, not to get too deep into it, th- but this this strikes me as the kind of matchup you like the Giants. They're a dog. They're 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 a team that's performed well a- as a dog. Not not as well as a home team, but Dan Jones as a dog is just a guy. They, they're going to be in this. They, they, just, they would be a small dog sound effect right here. And the big the big guy the big the big key who's coming back. We saw Kayvon Thibodeau on national TV have a ton of pressures. He had the most pressures last week in the entire NFL. And now they get Oziz Ojolari back, which that they haven't had those two guys play together all year. So the defense should look a little bit different. They still don't have a Dory Jackson back, but there's 0% chance I'm laying two and a half with Taylor Heineke and the Washington Commandos on the road. Okay, that's fair. So I, I guess I'll take Giants two and a half just because of the. You probably want to tease this one too. <laughs> Giants are playing close games. No, they week. they don't really get blown out. That's why I like them catching ten against the Cowboys. That's why I like them even here as a small dog uh, against Washington. Uh, checking in with the chat, Faustino Hernandez says Skins money line, and then he goes, "Wait, Washington's favored." <laughs> uh, and then uh, we got some Darius Knox saying, "Don't fade golf at home." The eleventh commandment. Um, a H Matar says here for the Browns versus Texans preview <laughs> and uh, almost there, Ryan, what is the official split on the, uh, on the giants commanders? Oh, I, I didn't give out a couple of these. Let's see. Uh, uh, Jags Detroit, not worth mentioning. It's pretty close to 50, 50, uh, Washington. Uh, we're seeing 62% on the giants. But 62 on. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I, Interesting because we know the line moved. We know the line has grown. There's some from, reverse line movement, Ryan. We know it's gone. Well, we know they took early money for sure on Washington because it went from pick them to, to minus two and a half right away. And then I think this money is now coming back in on the Giants. That, that That's the only way I could read the situation. Ryan, we got a ton of picks left to get to for week 13 NFL Picks Podcast. Before we get to that, shout out to Rocket Money. You want to save money? Of course you do. You save money so you can bet more on these games. Get down on some same game parlays. You need a couple extra bucks. What better way to get a couple extra bucks than to cancel all those subscriptions you're not using? I mean, when you get your credit card bill, do you sit out there and get your reading glasses and comb through it? No, you just pay it and and you move on with your life. But think of all those free trials you've signed up for that eventually start building your credit card. $399, $499, $799. It's not a big amount initially, but that adds up over the course of the year. You could be wasting hundreds, even thousands of dollars. I did it uh, for my account. I found like two or three things that I wasn't using. I canceled or, you know, I canceled some of my wife's things and and see if she notices. (laughs) She has it and it's saving us money. All you got to do is go to rocketmoney.com slash SGPN. They set it up. They make it so easy. One button canceling. Very easy. Rocketmoney.com slash SGPN. Rocketmoney.com slash SGPN. And of course, Manscaped. The holiday season is here, and you know what that means. Me talking about my pubes. Hey, Manscaped helps you get rid of your pubes. Everyone loves a tree that's trimmed. Everyone loves a turkey that's ready for stuffing. Man, they, I love their, uh, I, they, they really kill it with their analogies. Shout out to everyone who said in the videos of them uh, thanking Manscaped at their Thanksgiving dinner. Oh. Uh, head over to our Twitter at Gambling Podcast to check that out. There are some amazing ones. But as, as you're... <laughs> As you're reminded, um, also a great gift for the man in your life. I know we have some wives and girlfriends. Shout out to the SGPN wags that uh, are either forced to or just secretly enjoy the podcast. What better way to uh, get your guy to clean up than getting him the ultimate men's hygiene bubble bundle? Uh, 20% off and free shipping when you use the promo code SGP. 
20% off and free shipping. The lawnmower 4.0 increased horsepower, amazing LED light. They got it all. So 20% off and free shipping. Just go to manscaped.com, promo code SGP. They tune in to hear my voice, Sean. Yes. Hello, ladies. <laughs> Cleveland heads to Houston. Uh, for the game we circled before the season started, the game that Roger Goodell circled when he decided how long to suspend Deshaun Watson. Oh, it's a complete coincidence. Oh, I'm sorry, the arbiter, the new, the independent arbiter. Uh, Cleveland is laying a touchdown on the road in the return of Deshaun Watson. Are we even sure Deshaun Watson is going to take all the snaps? Minus two ten on the money line. Houston plus one seventy. Forty three and a well, half. Well, Ryan, according total. to the complaints, Deshaun Watson always finishes. So. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> so, sometimes at inappropriate times. But if we know one thing about Deshaun Watson, he's gonna finish. I can't wait to see the first time he has a towel like coming out of his <laughs> pants and he throws the towel on the ground. We're gonna capture that. Make a make well, a Ryan, moment out I of it. I told you this. Uh, the one of the attorney that was involved uh, to some degree of like rounding up these the victims. This is almost like made up. It, this is an onion story. I, I, I again, we don't really do hard research here, but. I clicked on two or three links that said had the same story. He is bringing, I, I think, seven of these uh, accusers to the stadium, seven of the victims to the stadium, and having them sit in a box to watch that game. See, uh, seems bizarre to me. If I was involved in this, I would almost I, feel. I, I, I again, I can't put myself in their shoes, but it seems crazy. And I, I, is it to get into Sean's head? I don't know what the motivation is. It just seems crazy. Uh, Why? Well, I, I mean, to force them to watch him finish again. <laughs> See, there, there's lots I, I of jokes here, Sean. I, I really, I, I don't understand why. If you're the lawyer, you would publicize this. Okay, so yeah, this is coming from Pro Football Talk. Ten of Deshaun Watson's accusers plan to attend <laughs> the game. Uh, Who's paying for it? Though? The lawyer, or the Texans. Uh, that'd be uh, awesome <laughs> if it's the Texans. <laughs> that yeah. Uh, I, th I guess they're saying, according to the lawyer, to make a statement, hey, we're still here, we matter, our voice was heard, and this is not something that's over. Uh, this happens every oh. day in the United States. I, I just don't, going to the game seems like a bizarre move. All right, so here's my handicap. Well, let's, what, what do you, what's your thought of the game? I mean, uh, three we, simple things. Sure. Th three simple things. One, we, we saw Deshaun in the preseason, not, the last time we watched him play, not very good. The last time we watched him play a full season, you know, I think they won four games starting there. Second, um, the track record of players who have sat out for non-injury reasons for more than a season and then come back to football. What have we seen lately? Le'Veon Bell, he's boxing, right? I mean, Michael Vick, but that, that Michael was a, Vick is, took a is, little bit. He's while. the exception to the rule. Michael yeah. Thomas can't seem to stay healthy. Calvin Ridley will be interesting uh, next year to see what happens there. <laughs> I, I just... I can't imagine wanting to lay a touch. I, well, I know we the were, Texans we, are we were fucking in, washed. We were in Canton for the fantasy football conference where we got to see Deshaun Watson make his preseason debut. Yep. And it was, we're watching. <laughs> oh, it, that's right. It's in Canton. It's kind of this cool setup where they have like a little field. You could throw the football around, bunch of big screens. And he just comes out and he looks horrific. Browns he looks fans everywhere. So horrible. And there's, there, you know, there's Browns fans everywhere. No one's wearing a Watson jersey, but obviously you can tell like they're in this weird thing where they don't want to seem like they're supporting him, but they also want he's your quarterback. You want him to do well. I feel bad for Browns fans and Cleveland sports fans in general, because this is a really tough spot. And you know, Jacoby Brissett, like mojo wise, isn't this horrible? Jacoby Brissett, you knocked off Tom Brady at home. You have all this positive energy going, and now you pull Jacoby Brissett for Deshaun Watson and Texans, I, I think they're going to be motivated for this, right? Like, doesn't this feel like they're Super Bowl? Like, what other game on the Texans card matters? And last but not least, I, I think the one guy on their offense that's really been the best is Damian Pierce. Now he's had a couple of bad games. A lot of it is game script. They get really behind. It's not a good matchup. But Cleveland is horrible. They're <laughs> dead last in the league yeah. in rush defense. So. I think Damian Pierce is going to give them a nice jump start, and I think they're going to be able to hang around in this game. I think also Nick Chubb's going to get a ton of carries, and and this just the fact that both teams are probably going to want to run the ball a ton, I think leads me to take the Texans at plus seven. Although we, I did say they were an auto fit, <laughs> we did say we didn't want to be playing the Texans anymore. No. Uh, team number three, public. 
Cleveland Browns. Okay. A- 86% of the tickets and the money in on you the You know Browns. what? I'm making a statement, Ryan. I'm taking the Houston Texans. We, we took the Houston Texans before the season. There's nothing that happened yeah. between now and then. We, other did, than, we did think the Texans were going to be a little better than we, they were. We did. Other than the fact that I, Brissett has exceeded my expectations. Yeah. And I think we're going to see, we're going to be having like the, 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 the argument show, uh, the, the Monday morning quarterback talk is going to be, well, are the Browns better off with Brissett <laughs> as their quarterback? Oh, I mean, isn't that the first? Thing on get up. Whose contract is worse, Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson? <laughs> Benedict Dan told saying it's just too great that Watson is handing off to Chubb. <laughs> there are so many things. That... I know it's it, you can go down a complete rabbit hole. So we're both on the Texans plus seven. Fuck yeah. Even though I I there Houston is in auto fade. They they get a slide. They get a you know like uh, when you're in jail and you get like you can get 24 hours to like visit your mom's if she oh your mom passed away here's your 24 hour free pass that's Houston you're out of auto fade jail for 24 hours then get back into jail because I'm gonna fade you the rest of the season and, and in the theme of uh, of USA shout out to uh, me I'm wearing red right blue Sean yeah. didn't get the memo no I, I Ryan am, look at my I'm, camo oh you're right the, that, that's basically red white and blue I am making a point to pick all the teams with red, white, and blue in their logo. So let's well, go. and, and shout out to the Jake whipping up some sweet USA, uh, shirts. One is like, <laughs> it's called soccer USA. And then just a USA with a sweet bald Eagle store. Not sports gambling podcast.com. Get in there, grab some gear. The all shirts right. are insanely comfortable. Do we want last? Do we want to finally confirming that we're going back to Houston? I am. Yeah. It's God a temporary. Damn, it's, it's, like, a it's like your roommate in college when he keeps going back to that crazy bitch that comes by the room every once in a while and breaks a bunch of shit. But then two weeks later, he gets drunk and he goes back over there. That That's what we're dealing with with the Texans here. They've only won one game all year. It's looking bad. But I didn't get this point out. Lovey Smith's a traditional man. He's going to be very offended by what Deshaun Watson did. Green Bay heads to Chicago. Last early kick here, 10 a.m. on the West Coast. We're not sure, I guess, which quarterback is starting for either team. It sounds like Fields is trending to play for for some reason. It sounds like they they aren't going to shut him down. Really? It's it well. It sounds like he's trending to have a chance to play. It sounds like Aaron Rodgers, as reported by Ian Rappaport, by watching the Pat McAfee show and listening to what Aaron Rodgers said, reported that Aaron Rodgers uh, said he's going to play. <laughs> well, he says if he's not Matt, you can't go on a show and say, "Hey, I watched this other show." Aaron Rodgers said he's going to play. That's not <laughs> reporting. I hate Ian. Rappaport. It, it is somewhat reporting. And Ian Rappaport was right, Ryan, about the Ravens running back. That's unrelated to why I hate him. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, you can kind of only imagine what what version of Justin Fields are we going to get if Justin Fields plays? That's my question. Not a good one. Yeah, and and is he going to be a willing runner? Because I'm maybe that's all he does. I mean, Jalen Hurts ran for 157 yards against the Packers. Can you imagine? What Justin Fields could do running the ball against the Packers. So we were discussing bad run defenses earlier. Yeah. Um, you, well, you mentioned Cleveland; they're horrible. Houston; they're pretty bad. Uh, Chicago; they've been pretty bad. But Green Bay is the worst. I mean, Green Bay and Chicago, like this Houston, Cleveland, and Green Bay, Chicago could feature games where we have like shootouts on the ground. So that that's my concern is that there isn't much to be. But, but Mike White just shredded this Bears defense. That's up, but that's the handicap. I'm going back to the Packers. Fuck it. Lay the points. Aaron Rodgers said he's playing. He owns the Packers. No that, further handicap I, I mean, needed. That is pretty simple. Uh, Equinamia St. Brown is out for the season. Darnell Mooney is out for yeah, the this, season. They lost the, the key member of their defensive backfield, uh, Eddie Jackson, last game. Mike White just shredded him. Mike White just shredded him. Mike White just shredded him. No, you, you got to take uh, you got to take the Packers here, even as a road favorite. I, I does plus be- narrative. Aaron Rodgers knows that they're going to be out of the playoffs after this week, no matter what happens. One big game to show everyone, and then they can let Jordan Love play. <laughs> yeah, he he did uh, he did really specify. He goes, as long as we're not mathematically eliminated, uh, I'm going to be playing. It seems like he he's not totally injured. He was just in a bunch of pain and probably didn't want to deal with the, you know, getting his ass kicked on uh, no. national television, but he knows he fucks up the bears. Well, and last but not least, Ryan, uh, 
I don't know how this didn't make it into your because I go, did you see the Deshaun Kaiser quote? Oh, yeah. And you said no. And I go, I don't know how you didn't saw it, but Deshaun Kaiser, apparently, according to him, the first thing he uh said, he introduced himself to Aaron Rodgers. First thing Aaron Rodgers said was, Do you believe in 9 11 <laughs> Imagine, imagine opening up your relationship with someone. How did how did Aaron Rodgers not end up with the Seattle Seahawks? Perfect combination. <laughs> Pete Carroll also has a lot of questions about 9 11. Aaron Rodgers has a lot of questions about 9 11. Hey, coach, you want to study some film tonight? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you talking about Tower 7? All they're right, they're just in. watching loose change over and over again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Aaron Rodgers, one more time. Let's go. Uh, all right, 105 kick here on the West Coast. Seattle heads to Los Angeles to take on the Rams. Minus 7.5. Minus 360 on the money line. Rams plus 290. 41 and a half is the total. Boy, uh, the the network executives are regretting putting Rams Broncos on Christmas. Oh man, that is a horrible. That is Unwrap Cole. This present, Cole, Bryce Perkins. Cole in our fucking stock. No, Aaron. They're shutting them all down. Cooper Cup. Stafford for the uh, is continuing to stay in the concussion slash tank protocol. The Aaron Donald has entered the tank protocol. Although they don't even have picks, so it, it, n- none of it makes sense. Uh, I know I've heard a lot of people say you can't possibly want to <laughs> lay seven and a half points with Geno Smith and Pete Carroll in the Seattle team with the way that defense is playing. Absolutely, I do. They just got their ass kicked in overtime. They 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 lost the game. They probably should have won. Pete Carroll knows that this is a big time spot. I know it's a divisional game. Uh, they, they even when these teams play. Uh, with uh, in previous years, like this, this is a game where there, there's going to be some points scored. I just don't see how the Rams score any points. And without Aaron Donald, when you build a team full filled with studs and duds, and you lose your studs, you just have a <laughs> bunch of fucking duds. And I, like, what's the handicap here? I, uh, they're begging you to take the Rams at seven and a half. They're begging. Yeah, you. They, they they moved it to seven and a half to try and get some people on the Rams. I'm not falling for it. Pete Carroll really good against the spread after losing as a favorite 20 and 10 and it, so far, this is going to be a Seattle rock is Seattle so? crowd. Oh yeah. No, I'm not. I, Rams fans are out. They're selling Ram, their oh, tickets. I mean, Rams fans, as soon as they lost one game, they were out now that now that like the two people they could name on the team, we need to do a man on the street asking asking Rams fans to name three guys playing today. I would even just grab a lineup of the wide receivers, like grab like four of their, their Caucasian receivers. Allen Robinson's (laughs) out. uh, Cooper cups out. I mean, our boy, Ben Skoranek, he can't get a look. I don't know what's happening with this team. There was a, there was a hilarious stat that uh, (laughs) Matt Stafford has targeted white receivers on like 85% of his passing attempts. Uh, It just shows you like how little they used (laughs) Allen Robinson. No, I know. (laughs) <laughs> and maybe Skoranek in there. The decoy. I, uh, I, I mean, just don't see how the Rams are going to be able to put up many points. Uh, I think it's going to be, it's just going to be tough to get motivated. Bryce Perkins is going to be playing at home in front of a hostile crowd. Uh, give me the Seahawks laying seven and a half. I mean, the the reason you wouldn't take Seattle here is because the number was much better earlier in the week, I guess. Um, I I, I just don't care. We talked about this with the Chiefs Rams game. It didn't it didn't matter that it was fifteen and a half. I, I just don't see how this team's gonna score points. And again, Aaron Donald, really good. The yeah. first, first game he's missing since two thousand seventeen. You know that, Sean? So I, I just you know, we obviously haven't seen this defense without him. And I, I think there there's not much else going around. Uh, this could be a there's no reason this isn't gonna be a blowout. And I, I I might even look to maybe avoid some of the some of the guys on Seattle. In DFS because I are, are they playing four quarters in this one uh they they might try and run it up I would think no, and and the Seattle defense is susceptible to big plays a la Josh Jacobs and, and maybe some deep pass and stuff but I just don't know I, I don't think uh I don't think take, the Rams have that kind of firepower take out those those touchdown runs I think Jacobs only had like three yards of carry so I guess we'll see if they if the Rams can get get it going on the ground. That would be the angle, right? McVay can scheme up a run game. They they figure yeah. out a way to exploit this run defense. I'm not buying. Give me the Seattle Seahawks laying the points. All right, Dolphins. They head to San Francisco to take on the Niners. Teacher meets student. Wax on, wax off. Mike McDaniel is really starting to to nestle up into my uh, my heart. <laughs> love love everything he says. Found a, found that video of him on the, the internet today. Uh, telling Tua his high school form was trash. 
<laughs> just like Sean so, says. I mean, come on. It, Mike McDaniel said his technique was trash. I wasn't far off. And and kudos to Mike for McDaniel for figuring, you know, you could call him the Department of Sanitation because he's figuring out how to, he's turning, he's figuring out how to deal with trash. Oh, wow. And I, I mean, honestly, kudos to him for really putting Tua in the best place to succeed. I didn't see this from Tua at all. Obviously, as a known to a hater, but uh, I think if there's anyone that can figure out what Mike McDaniel is doing scheme wise and shut it down, I think it's the San Francisco 49ers and Kyle Shanahan. I mean, 49ers, it's like been like over a month since a team scored a second half point against them. The, what's really jumping out at me, Ryan, is, and, and maybe this got lost in the shuffle, but the Dolphins lost their left tackle yep. in garbage Armstead. time. Yep. Armstead. And so now you have a backup left tackle going against Nick Bosa caveman. I mean, yeah, there's uh, all that guy wants to do is sack the quarterback. Like you could just look at his eyes and tell the guy is incredibly, incredibly dumb. He was put on this earth for one reason to rush the passer I mean, it, it, yeah, and he's going to have a big day. If this was like uh 800, the year 800, we would be sending him out to like fight Vikings as our hero. Uh, look, I, I think not only that, I just, I, I like the number. I like what the number is telling me. I, I do think Miami turns into a public team. Uh, <clears throat> actually take that back. They are a public team. Okay. 79%. Um, I, I would imagine people are going to look to like, oh, it's the offense. They're going to, it's uh, two of us, Jimmy G and we're able to get four that, that move from three to four it, to me is, or I guess we're picking it at three and a half is significant because it, it just tells me what the book thinks. And the book thinks they're going to need that Miami money at the end of the day, I guess. And even though the money's coming in, it's still, it's still sitting there. And, and, Sh and Shanahan. I, and, and I do not... think the dolphins might be able to get some deep stuff. Cause I do think you can get to the, you can get to the, the 49ers cornerbacks. If you have enough time, uh, it does seem like Mostert should be back. Like, what do you, I, I don't know. I just revenge I, game for Mostert revenge game for Jeff Wilson. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of revenge here, but Shanahan's an ego guy. And I know I think I've said this already, but Shanahan as an ego guy, he did not like all the credit that Mike McDaniel got this off season as to be the genius behind <laughs> the offense that Shanahan runs the, 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 the guy who helped Shanahan take the offense to the next level. Shanahan doesn't like to hear that. So I think to no, me, I, I think Ryan's to a, is going to be ready to yeah. stop this. And I, I, I think to beat the 49ers, you have to have a pretty good offensive line and with no Armstead. I just don't see the Dolphins having that. And, and I think now we're going to see San Francisco a bit more expensive a couple weeks down the road. So maybe we're getting a discount, uh, uh, get ahead of it before everyone piles on. It wasn't it was only a couple weeks ago we were talking to Katie Mox, talking about Niners plus uh, 150, plus 170 as the division winner. Now that almost feels like a lock. Uh, un, uh, hard to see Geno Smith and the Seahawks catching him, but no one else is even in the realm. All right. Next up, we got the Chargers taking on the Raiders in Las Vegas. 125 kickoff on the West Coast. Chargers laying two, minus 130. Raiders plus 110. 50 and a half is the total. It's, is, it, is it as simple as Chargers on the road? Is, it, is that the simple handicap? I, I, and there's some flow chart stuff here. Chargers on the road against the Raiders. In particular, 12 and 6 straight up the last 18 games. Like... They just show up on the road, five and one ATS. Uh, the Chargers have been on the on the road. Their only loss was last week against Arizona, and they won outright. Um, they didn't cover here. I mean, the Raiders have won back to back games in overtime with like a crazy walk off play. To me, that just doesn't auto play, right? What's up? That's an just, auto play. Yeah, it just doesn't feel sustainable. I think I think both teams are set up to put up a decent amount of points. Uh, Max Crosby, he might be able to get some pressure. I mean, there's just to, to Justin Decker's point, you know, they have Derwin James and uh, who's, who's the other like actual defensive player they have. That's not in. Oh, Khalil Mack. Yeah. Derwin James, Khalil Mack and 10 or <laughs> and nine Madden Sims. <laughs> that, that's so that's, that's really the worry. But on the other side, Raiders are six worth in, uh, in pressure rate. And so if you give Herbert a clean pocket with a healthy Keenan Allen with Deandre Carter, with Josh Palmer, um, and, and just whatever it is, this is a division flow chart game. The chargers beat the Raiders in Oakland, uh, in Vegas. This is how it goes. Also returning to the scene of the crime, Sean, 
when they could have just tied their way into the oh, playoffs. Oh, yes. And they screwed it all up. So That was a rare loss for them in Las Vegas. I know they already took care of the revenge week one of this season, but, I mean, they're going back to the scene of the crime. They're not going to leave anything <laughs> to, to chance. Chargers by a million. Kansas City heads to Cincinnati where the Chiefs are laying two. Minus 130 on the money line. Chief, uh, Bengals plus 110. 52 and a half is the total. Oh, so fully prepared. I, 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 I don't know how you don't take the. How do you not take Patrick Mahomes right here? Oh, okay. T -t tell me, give me your handicap because. Uh, maybe I'm getting a little cute, but I like the uh, I like the Cincinnati Bengals. There's there's a there's a switch that gets flipped with this Bengals team. We saw it last year, and it's 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 funny how much it's mirroring the same thing. The Bengals at home in cold weather. Jamar Chase, they're getting him back, and just Joe Burrow in November, in December, even in January. Like this is when this guy plays his best. He's getting back in the MVP race, and and really the matchup. Like uh, I, I look at those matchups like yards per game, and I always highlight any that are like fifteen different. You know where it's like number one versus number seventeen. Bengals, number one passing offense yards per game. Chiefs, number 27 in passing defensive yards per game. Hmm. Uh, Kansas City, 0-5 straight up in the last five games in Cincinnati. Really, what the what the real handicap Interesting. is. Interesting. The only way the Chiefs get a pass rush is with blitzing. You blitz Joe Burrow, you're about to go down. Give me the Bengals as a home dog. He is great against the blitz. Uh, I think he's got this Kansas City defense figure it out. And he has swag right now. He really has confidence. I understand the chiefs, the revenge game. They have a lot going for them, but I'm taking uh, I, Bengals as a home dog. I wish Jamar chase was back last week. Yeah. Cause I worry a little bit that his like uh reassimilation won't be right away. And remember this playoff game again, we're back to the scene of the crime. The chiefs we're going into halftime. I mean, we're watching the game. It's it's 21 10. It's like, uh oh, it, like this is like the Chiefs are moving on. That's that. And yeah. then what happened? They blew it in the second half. It was great. I, I you, was live betting the hell out I'm of I'm sure Bengals. you're watching the, the 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 media availability of the Chiefs players. They look like they really want to beat the Bengals, Sean. Okay. Uh, I think this uh, is no, a I, very I focused Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid team. I, I love the Chiefs here. I love. I, I know I'm I'm getting chalky uh, down the, the down the stretch <laughs> here in my card, but but uh, th clap th those erasers. Right I now. have not seen Chiefs players this motivated to beat a team mm. all season. That that's what I'll say. Ultimate revenge spot. Give me the Chiefs, and your MVP Patrick Mahomes. All right, uh, Indy Sunday night football. Came, came out nine to one. Nice job, Sean. Thank you. Surprised we didn't flex this one out, guys. Indy the Colts. Jeff Saturday the coach. What do you think was going to happen? This is a clear uh, influence of his media relationships. It's bullshit. Uh, they want. Why do you want Colts Cowboys on Sunday Night Football? There's some really. You could have flexed Chiefs Bengals. You could. All right, Colts Cowboys. I guess Cowboys laying ten and a half minus six hundred on the money line. Colts plus four fifty. Forty four is the total. Uh, I guess we're taking Colts plus ten and a half. <laughs> I mean Parsons against Matt Ryan. Shifty Matt Ryan, you saw him scampering all over the field. But Matt Ryan's about to torch Parsons and the Cowboys. Uh, the fact that they're coming off short rest, that is troubling. I'll ask you this, Ryan. Who is the better coach? Jeff Saturday or Mike McCarthy? Well, I hate to admit it, but it's probably Mike McCarthy. <laughs> Jeff Saturday I, I, quote, we, uh, we really wish I would have called the timeout. <laughs> similar clock management style. I'll defend him. It was horrible clock management, but to his point, it didn't matter. Like they didn't get the fourth and three. They would have lost that game anyways. Yeah. I, here, here's why I like the Colts, Ryan. And not only that we're fading Dallas, Dallas, as you know, Dallas sucks. Uh, Colts defense. They're kind of competent. They're only allowing 20 points per game. Yeah. And the Colts, they know how to lose games and they know how to lose close games. Oh. Like, it would have been really easy for this Colts team down a bunch of points at home to just pack it up. They found a way to get back in that game and have a heartbreaking loss. This is what's going to happen against this Cowboys team. The Cowboys that, are in cruise control right now. And and Matt Ryan, even dating back to last year with the Falcons, the man was well versed at finding that back door. No quitting this guy. And when the defense loosen up, loosens up, he doesn't care. 
He's going to continue to throw those check downs to Michael Pittman, get the easy stuff, drive down the field, get the points. Uh, we're, our card has the Colts, the Lions, the Tech. We have some shit teams on our card, Sean. Yeah. AKA Tech, winners. Let's go. Te- round robin, the money line. Uh, do we start with the Texans and the Colts this week? <laughs> I mean, why did you not flex this out? No one wants to watch this. I, 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 I am curious. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, it's like a snuff film. All right. Monday night, 515 on the West Coast. Big time rivalry here. Saints, uh, Bucks, and this one, it really matters. Uh, Saints aren't out of the division race yet. No. Somehow. Why, why is Jameis not playing? Can we get an answer to this? Yeah, uh, he must have said something. Something happened. Uh, do we yeah. have another Uber situation? Tampa Bay lane four, minus 190 on the money line. Saints plus 160. 40 and a half is the total. Well, well first off, Ryan, uh, oh, first off, shout out to I the win. Oh. I enjoyed a delicious TB 12 smoothie <laughs> at their cafe. I, I Ryan goes, you're getting the Tom Brady smoothie. I go, hell yeah. Well, plant based protein. You're not a plant based protein guy. Well, I did get a bunch of chorizo in my way. Most so I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where chorizo comes from, what plant, but uh, the <laughs> TB 12 smoothie was delicious. So thank you. Shout out to the win. Wow. Oh, Free plug. Are we getting, is that Tom Brady paying us? Are you going to pick the bucks now? No, uh, it was funny to see the TB 12 branding in the menu uh, at the win. Look, isn't the bucks beat the saints earlier this year. Isn't this a flow chart game though? Typically. Yeah. And guess who's back. Guess who's back, Sean Latimer. Oh yeah. Mike Evans, best friend. <laughs> he, 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 he timed it perfectly just no, to come I, back for this. Game. I'm sure this is why he's coming back. Bucks are really bad. I mean, what you could always count on for the Bucks when they're making their run was good rushing defense. They're 28th in defensive rush EPA this season. Yeah. And I, I think Kamara has a good game. I think they bounce back from getting shut out. I love teams, and maybe this is something we should look at, Ryan. We should get a model going. But teams coming off a shutout as a dog, I think there, there's got to be some value in this. And this is the Saints Super Bowl. I mean, one to get them back into the playoff mix, but really at this point, they just care about beating the bucks, maybe the Falcons too. I mean, they're back-to-back division games. Really the, the biggest thing that's concerning is I, I know we always have this conversation. I don't want to go there cause it's so annoying, but Brady was missing a lot of throws mm-hmm. and there's two things that's going on. Brady doesn't trust his receivers. He doesn't have a guy he trusts. He doesn't have an Edelman. He doesn't have a Gronk. Like even though no they James have James White, even though they have a bunch of talent, uh, <laughs> he just doesn't have a guy he trusts. But more importantly, Todd Bowles and Byron Leftwich don't trust Tom Brady. The fact Whoa. that they kept their timeouts in their pocket, they were worried about Tom Brady throwing Whoa. an interception at the end of the game. I mean, curse. That, that the curse threw, is real. He, he threw like a forty-yard uh, was like to Julio but they had no time left. Like that is horrible clock management. The curse is real. And again, yes, obviously he's cursed. Giselle uh, Bunchen is a witch. Uh, Whoa, uh, I, uh, allegedly, according to TikTok, <clears throat> according to our TikTok, <laughs> uh, I'm all over the saints here. Plus four. So last week was the first time in 333 games that the saints were shut out. Uh, the 332 game streak was the, uh, they, they last lost uh, funny enough to the Niners by shutout. So the Niners bookended that streak and uh, the Niners also have the longest all-time streak of 420. but now the Steelers and Mike Tomlin have the longest active streak at 256. I, I think you're right to, to obviously coming off a shutout. It's not quite the close your eyes special, but it's the similar as premise. Hey, this team looked horrible rock bottom especially like the fact that they're coming back home, especially like the, the, or at least back to the East coast, especially like the fact that they're coming into a divisional spot. And frankly, we mentioned this as the reason they might look ahead in that San Francisco game. This is a big time game. It's not hate week one, but it's hate week two. And uh, <clears throat> curse is real. You don't, you don't go to Cleveland and lose to Brownie the elf. <laughs> if you're not cursed, I know Brown, the Browns are cursed. Brown of the elf was cursed. That's how powerful the Tom Brady is totally cursed. I mean, the money lost in FTX. Uh, do we have to explain more? Like it, it's crazy. He, he did. He, Tom Brady's in a tough spot right now. Should, <laughs> he really is. He should, uh, he should check out uh, my 250 to one 
Uh, <laughs> build got, a bet for Thursday he's, he's night. He's got to win some cash back. Hey, it's a pay. Well, and what was that we saw on the on the wire this morning? Uh, Patriots open to reunion with Tom Brady or something like that. Yeah, that. <laughs> That, oh, yes, please. That story gets leaked out because Tom Brady is one foot out the door. He hates to, uh, Todd Bowles. He hates Byron Leftwich. So you're saying that was Tom Brady's camp leak? Oh, 100%. I love it. Who else would leak it? Mac love Jones? Love it. I mean, okay, so there's there's essentially three people involved. Bill Belichick, Mac Jones, Tom Brady. Bailey Zappi. Don't forget about Bailey Zappi. <laughs> no, but He's off to the side like, what's Bailey going on, Zapp- guys? Bailey Zappi wants huh? to play. So is Bill Belichick going to leak it? He's like golden retriever with a tennis ball in his mouth. (laughs) Bill Belichick's not going to leak it. Is Mac Jones going to leak that? No, he's not going to leak that. The only one that it possibly benefits or the only one who might be interested in putting it out there is Tom Brady. Bill Belichick did leak to Brian Flores that he didn't get the job with oh the Giants. God. So it was hurting another team. So what hurt, a crazy domino hurt, that hurting was. a Bucks team. Uh, wouldn't put, put it past Belichick. All right. We got to the end time for the lock dog keys presented by win bet sports game podcast.com slash win bet bet hundred dollars. Get a hundred dollar free bet two locks money line dog and a three team tease. Kramer. What do you got? Mm, you want me to go first? People, people really love when I say that that's, that was, for, that was for the people. Yes. Uh, all right. Lock number one system play. Give me the chargers against the Raiders, Ooh. Josh McDaniels back to back overtime games. Uh, he's hanging on by a thread lock. Number two, give me the chiefs minus two. I told you Ooh. very motivated, Ooh. uh, getting fiery, no dogs on my lock card. And for my dog, yeah, I wouldn't dare give out a little baby dog, but it's between two, two divisional games, Sean. Um, you know what? Let's go to Monday night. Saints get it done against the Bucks do, 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 plus one seventy. Tees. Baltimore minus two and a half should already be there. Uh, let's add in Giants plus eight and a half, and Seahawks minus one and a half. That's how you fucking tease, right there. <laughs> plus EV teaser. I got to add that to my my Twitter bio. Plus EV plus teaser. EV teaser. <laughs> All right, here we here we go, Ryan. Strap in. I'm getting delirious. Okay. By the way, I didn't. While you're thinking, I didn't say this for Sunday Night Football, but double digit dogs in the NFL this year: eleven and six ATS. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. San Francisco minus three and a half. Oh, great lock. Love it. Uh, this, I mean, the the Armstead. Uh, there's a world where I pick the Dolphins, but Bosa against a backup left tackle. To me, is just too crazy not to take. Uh, quack, for, quack. for my other lock, I don't know if I, I I might be making show history here, Ryan, locking up the Detroit Lions at home as a home dog. Oh wow! And I was gonna take the Saints. You stole it from me. You know what? Dallas sucks. Give me the Indianapolis Colts to shock the world. Plus four fifty on the money line. Uh, <laughs> this is how you right. I, everyone laughed when I took the Colts or so I took the Jags against the Colts. Uh, shout out to friend of the program, Scott Bowser. He, he's been calling him Jeff like Thursday or Jeff Sun <laughs> like every day, but Saturday. Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, Baltimore minus two and a half. Love that. Yeah. Then give me, you know, I, I didn't put Detroit plus seven on a teaser, but that's interesting. Hopefully maybe the line goes up a little bit. We can get plus seven and a half later. Uh, Jets plus nine. Oh, look at you. I think they're going to be in that game. And then uh, last but not least, give me the, give me the, give me the saints up to 10. I mean, that's actually a pretty good tease. If I do say so. Fingers myself. crossed. So circa millions, we'll put uh, new Orleans in here. Mm. No, I don't think we, do you want to put new Orleans in there. Okay. No, I, 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 I throw, like throw our locks in there first. Let me okay. see what it looks like. Chargers minus two. Okay. Chiefs minus two Niners, a lot of left coast teams here. A little left coast bias, maybe on the show Niners minus three and a half lions plus one. I do like the idea of getting another dog on the card. Yeah. I mean the only other yeah, uh, jets or, or saints, right? Yep. We, we don't want to fuck around with the Steelers or, or Ravens again. And we want to get another dog on the card. Oh, I, I actually do. I like up the Steelers. No. I always pick the Steelers. All right, let's do it. Saints. Saints, New Orleans plus four. That's a field goal game. Hey, that was an awesome show. I'm getting delirious. (laughs) 
You know, I'm getting tired here. It's almost bedtime. Yeah, Ryan's ready to go to bed. It's almost it's almost uh, it's, uh 5 30 West Coast. Yeah, it's time. like 9 p.m. my time though. Uh big thanks to Blue Wire and of course Win Bet and uh the Win Las Vegas. Hey, check out the store. We got a ton of sweet USA gear. Getting ready for the big game coming up on Saturday against the Netherlands. Will but, you be up at 6 a.m. watching? Uh, well, it actually starts at 7. Coverage begins oh, at 6 a.m. Right? tricky That's bastards. how they treat I, are, Will I, you be up at 7? We'll see. I need to know, do, are Netherlands <laughs> the ones with the wooden shoes? Or is yeah, that, that, okay. Yeah, they have <laughs> tulips, wooden Wood shoes, shoes, windmills, weed, hate uh, windmills. red light district. All right, so they get some things right. But I hate windmills. Hate tulips, hate wooden shoes. Clogs is what they're called. Clogs. Uh, shout out to the chat, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. We'll be back tomorrow talking DFS. Friday, we got the props show, uh, pregame show on Sunday. And uh, yeah, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. Hey, follow us on Spotify for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Best of luck to Mr. Watson this weekend, psych. <laughs> Kramer, let it. Right.